Hey, Phil Torres from the Jungle Diaries. I'm currently driving down a dirt road in one of the most remote parts of Alaska, in the rain, trying to find one of the biggest predators on the planet. This area is so important, not only to the Alaskan people, but also to the Alaskan wildlife. Why? Because this river I'm heading down to right now has millions of salmon passing through it every single year to reach their spawning grounds. Not to mention the surrounding area here has tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of salmon. And if you're thinking salmon and you're thinking Alaska and you're thinking that sounds delicious, you'd be right. And it's not just delicious for us, it's also delicious for gigantic grizzly bears. Well, while I'm hoping to see some salmon today, I'm also really hoping to see a gigantic predator in action in Akadi. See how it goes. So it's kind of looking like I can't take the truck any deeper here. So time to go on foot. This is a big day for me. Having traveled around the world, there's one predator I've always wanted to see but never have. And it happens to be one of the largest on the planet. Bear spray. This is an important one. We keep it on my wrist. This is the part of the journey, honestly, I'm most nervous about because when I was talking to the local guides around here, they were saying that the bears sometimes are just sitting in this meadow here on the way down to the river. Now, one of the best things I've going for me right now is that salmon tastes better than human. Uh, the bears here know that salmon is plentiful it is rich in fats and protein, and humans taste like pepper spray, bug spray, and, uh, you know, have tough boots to fight back. Visibility is really limited right here. There could be a bear around any of these corners, and you're really face to face with them. So that's why I got this bear spray. I may have to just drop the camera and talk to a bear and try to fight it off. All right, let's get down to the river. So look at this path right here. This looks like a big mammal coming through. See the way the grass is pushed down this way? The way he was going? So, now we gotta find it. I've seen a lot of areas up here with pushed down grass that's all heading in this direction. So my suspicion is that if there is a bear here, or was a bear here earlier, it's this way. Take a look at this river. It was at risk from the Pebble Mine Project that you may have read about in the news. It was such a huge issue because this water is an essential ecosystem for salmon and the river flows down into Bristol Bay and the ocean and as you can tell by the beauty of the wildlife here, it was a major environmental win when the project got cancelled. And now, back to tracking down a bear. But first, the mosquitoes are out in force, time to cover up a bit Put on some bug spray so I can focus. I don't want the mosquitoes to eat me just as much as I don't want a bear to eat me. So I've kind of reached the point where it's got a little too sketchy by my standards. Really narrow path back here to get on the side of the river, so not a lot of escape routes. I found that fresh dung right there. That could have been from last night, so clearly bears take this path. Uh, basically, my only defense would be jumping in the water if this thing didn't work. So I'm going to go a little bit further. Don't want to press my luck, but I do want to see a bear. Plot twist here. I was walking along and I found these sunglasses. They are fishing sunglasses with really good polarizing filter on them. So someone was fishing out here at some point, and when I put them on, I looked in the water. 
you won't believe what's in there. Check out all of these salmon. Thousands are passing through here every single day, swimming up the rapids to lay eggs as the salmon have done here for thousands of generations. I searched along the side of the river a little bit longer, and then it finally happened. Bear, bear, bear! Okay, I just ran over to this area because I saw something big and brown in the water. You guys, I just saw my first wild grizzly bear. Take a look at this footage. And there it is, one of the largest predators on the planet. They call this type a blondie or a goldie from that light colored fur. And what was it doing here? You guessed it, sniffing the air, walking along the side of the river, and in the river, looking for fish. This first venture into the water came up empty. But I sat by and waited, because eventually, the hunt was on. And in this case, the bear was running straight at me. My best guess was I wasn't the target, so I stood still, waited, kept filming, and then I finally realized this bear had something else in mind. That was crazy. So, I guess the fishermen here are disposing of the salmon carcasses into the water and then there's this little smooth inlet where they're kind of floating in. The bear's smelling that. Coming over here and just having an all-you-can-eat buffet. It doesn't even have to fish for it. They're just floating in there. That was a show. The grizzly was coming out probably every five, 10 minutes. Honestly, he could come out right over my shoulder any second now. There was another one I saw across the way. This is spectacular. This is water full of salmon. These are riverbanks full of grizzly bears. And people here were fishing. So I kept noticing that the grizzly, I have to check over my shoulder, make sure it's not there. I kept noticing that the grizzly was sniffing the air when they were filleting the fish. And I think that they're used to the human presence a little bit. And they know that, hey, when they're filleting the fish, they're going to throw the bones in the water and there's still going to be some meat on there. So that's what we were seeing with the big blondie right back here. But let me tell you, the amount of salmon I've seen in the water just with my own eyes, we saw a thousand, a thousand giant salmon today. And that is just a fraction of the millions that use this river and the tens of millions that use the lake at the end of this river. And this is just some of the most, okay, not a bear. This is just some of the most spectacular and important habitat on the planet. And people always think Alaska is 
big, it's vast. So when you hear about projects like the Pebble Mine and you hear about the controversy with Bristol Bay, this, this is what it's all about. If you make a mine in an area like this, you risk contaminating one of the most spectacular shows on the planet. Actually, while I've been here flying in at the airport, we were seeing helicopters dismantling the Pebble Mine. So this is a win for conservation. It's tricky because, you know, for industry, that could have been a $500 billion project. But being here, seeing the importance of these rivers, these streams, these lakes to the salmon, you can't put a price on that. Those salmon have been here for millions of years. The Alaskans that have been here and relied upon them and, and smoked them and used them to survive the cold winters have been here for, what, eight, 10,000 years? So to come in and do a short-term project that maybe will get 500 billion over 100 years, what does that do to the future? What happens to generations 200 years from now, 500 years from now? Would they still get this treasure and a grizzly bear maybe sneaking up on them? I hope they do, but I hope they see the grizzly. I hope it doesn't sneak up on them too close, you know, just close enough. All right, I should get out of here.